Nathan Rabin once wrote that when it comes to filmmaking, whimsy is incredibly difficult to pull off. The movie that prompted this musing was John Patrick Shanley's beautiful debut, Joe vs. the Volcano, a film that for years seemed to exist just to populate movie rental shelves and hotel TV stations. No one takes Joe vs. the Volcano seriously. No one ardently recommends it in the canon of Tom Hanks movies, Steven Spielberg's beloved production house Amblin Entertainment, or even the wildly varied field of comedy. But a second life as a beloved classic has yet to be bestowed on Joe vs. the Volcano. I, for one, would like to know why. Yeah, Harry, but, but can he do the job? I know he can get the job, but can he do the job? I'm not arguing that with you. I'm not arguing that with you. I'm not arguing that with you. I'm not arguing that with you, Harry! Despite being the closest thing that America ever got to its own version of the appealingly tragic Brazil, the film is almost daringly breezy. Sure, it starts rough, with hero Joe Banks being told that on top of possessing the most depressing job in the country, in the grimmest part of Staten Island, he's also dying. Shanley wastes no time alerting us to the fact that he knows exactly what he's doing behind the camera. The opening sequence, which shows Joe walking to work with the other drones, is a dystopian nightmare right out of a German expressionist song. Some people say a man is made out of mud. All man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood and skin and bone. A mind that's weak and a back that's strong. You load 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Don't you call me cause I can go I owe my soul to the company store I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine Picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine I loaded 16 tons of number nine coal And the snow bar said, well bless my soul You load 16 tons, why do you get it's a statement of intent and a bold entry into the film's tone and storybook sensibility. The environment is comically depressing, and Joe's death sentence is the icing on the cake. He's found shortly after by an eccentric billionaire who offers him a new lease on life, provided he agrees to jump into an active volcano to appease the natives he's exploiting. I want to hire you to jump into a volcano. It's nonsense, and Shanley knows it. So all we can do is embrace it in the same way that Joe starts to take life by the leash. What follows is a cornucopia of wondrous new environments that Joe can only see because he's accepted that he'll be dead not long after enjoying them. Shanley and his crack art and production teams offer up a romantic version of both New York and L.A. that, on top of seeming like a rainbow-colored utopia to a man whose life was all grimy offices lit by fluorescent lights, seem like distant memories to anyone who's ever visited the fair cities. Joe vs. the Volcano achieves the unique feat of presenting cities as the big dream factories they appear to us when we're children. Imposing but welcoming, huge but cozy. In short, fairy tale kingdoms. Joe vs. the Volcano is one of those special movies that shows the New York I remember visiting when I was very young. The haze of my memory is mimicked by the slight glow that cinematographer Stephen Goldblatt and composer George Delarue anointed with. Which is fitting, because Joe Banks starts the film as a man and regresses to boyhood, learning to let in wonder, joy, and love again, rather than reject them out of a sense of responsibility, the benefits of which he doesn't even reap. Joe himself is transformed along with his environment, in just about every way as the film progresses. His complexion clears up, his hair is groomed, he seems to lose weight, he speaks more clearly and starts smiling that affable, goofy Tom Hanks grin that America fell in love with. And helping him on his journey of self-discovery is Meg Ryan at her least self-conscious and most free as a performer. She plays three roles, mapping the course of Hank's return to the human race by testing his willingness to leap into the unknown. She's too little. I can't handle it, Joe. Sorry. I 
forgot my bag. She's too much. Hi. Are you Joe Banks? Yeah. Who are you? I'm the daughter of the guy who hired you, Angelica Granamore. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Daddy told me to tell you that I don't know what he hired you for and not to tell me, that I'm totally untrustworthy. I'm a flibber to gibbet. Come on, let's get out of here. She's just right. Stop right there! I love you. I've fallen in love with you. I've never loved anybody. I don't know how it happened. I never even slept with him or anything. And now you're gonna kill yourself. Can you give us a minute? And proof that a little self-awareness goes a long way. Joe vs. the Volcano uses every tool at its disposal to try and unearth the secret to a happy life. Because at bottom, the film is about accepting life's mysteries, letting happiness pass your defenses, and knowing when to say no. I should say something. What are you muttering? This life. Life, what a joke. This situation, this room. Uh, Joe, maybe you should just go. You look terrible, Mr. Waturi. You look like a bag of shit stuffed in a cheap suit. Not that anybody could look good under these zombie lights. I, I, I can feel them sucking the juice out of my eyeball. Suck, 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 suck. <laughs> 300 bucks a week. That's the news. For 300 bucks a week, I've lived in this sink, this used rubber. You watch it, mister. There's a woman here. Which makes its failure and continued underappreciation all the more perplexing. Joe vs. the Volcano externalizes the thrill of being alive. How most of us don't know how good we've got it, just being able to experience the wonder that the world has to offer us. It's tragically fitting that most people don't know that they can watch Joe vs. the Volcano any time and realize how lovely and light as air a movie can be, how truly, singularly talented a filmmaker John Patrick Shanley is. Of course, there's always time to correct that. There's always time to turn your life around.